Hi and welcome back or welcome to my All The Perfume YouTube channel. In this video I'm sharing perfumes that Instagram made me buy. If you are subscribed to my channel and certainly if you follow me over on Instagram you will know that I have a very large perfume collection and this collection has come from a few different sources. I have been passionate about perfume and collecting it myself for over 20 years so there are plenty of bottles that I bought with my own money. I also always ask for perfume for birthdays and Christmas and I've bought a few on my travels too. In the last five years or so I do receive a lot of PR samples from brands and through my paid collaborations as well. I'm still buying perfume myself too. And these here, these six bottles are examples of where I've been influenced over on Instagram. I've seen maybe one person, or in some cases more than one person, enjoy the scent so much that I felt compelled to go and buy a bottle for myself. I will go through each one individually, tell you about the notes and how I feel about it myself now. First, I want to share In Love With Everything from Imaginary Authors, and this is how I was influenced. It was actually Victoria, over on Scent Memos, who spoke really highly of this perfume in her collection, and she and I have such similar taste, lots of sweet fragrances that we have in common. So even though I'd seen it in other people's collections, it was Victoria who really made me take the leap and buy myself this at the start of the year. We have a really fun concept with this as like a an 80s throwback perfume. And with the name, In Love With Everything, I was ready for like a positive, brand new start to 2024, and that's why I decided to treat myself to this particular perfume. I can't wait to give it a test. This perfume has in it notes of rum, citrus, raspberry, palm sugar, and sandalwood. So all the things I like, I just didn't expect to love it this much. This is so fruity and good. And it does what the brand wanted it to with taking you back, making you think of the 80s. But that's not from my personal memories because I was a young child in the 80s. This is smelling like you think it might have been, like when you think of the imagery in films, when you think of those big frilly bridesmaids dresses, which were still around in the early 90s. So perhaps I'm taking a little bit back to that time. It's got something a little synthetic about it, but it's got that lovely, strong punch note. And I don't know if they have punch at proms in America. Are you meant to have punch at proms or is it just something I've seen in films? But that is how I imagine that punch smelling. And it is beautiful and it projects so well. This is a perfume that I spray if I want to feel good. And I knew that spraying it for today's video would just make me feel great. And I have the added bonus now that it reminds me of the start of this year and optimism and feeling good. So it's a beautiful perfume. If you want an 80s fun throwback scent, go for this one. I was influenced, but I have no regrets. This is in love with everything. This perfume is 100% chilled from Cosmopolitan. And I had seen this lovely carton shaped bottle in so many collections and roundups and color collections and exactly the kind of content I love to create and post about. So that is why I wanted it in my collection. It just looks so cute. But what I will say is that I wanted to choose the perfume from the line that smelt the best, that I liked the most. Of course that made sense, so that I would get my cute bottle, but also a scent I would wear too. So in our 100% chilled, we have in the top, bergamot and red berries, in the middle, orange blossom and coconut milk, and in the base, cashmere wood, sandalwood and musk. And I have been looking forward to giving it a spray because I don't really reach for it enough. Let's go, so we spray like this. And we've got a scent that really takes me to that kind of Ariana Grande DNA of her perfumes. It's very lovely and sweet and bright, kind of in the way that a pear note would give me an, an opening that's almost a bit too much for some. I know that, quite a sharp, bright opening but then it's certainly creamy from the coconut milk and in the dry down, so musky. I want to say it's like cloud, but it's not quite. It's just very much an Ariana Grande DNA type perfume, a really enjoyable wear and a popular scent profile right now. So I'm happy with this and I tested it a few times, but I was certainly influenced in terms of this bottle shape. I just love it. 
I can't regret it because as I said, I did go and check to get the right perfume, but it was absolutely Instagram that had me buy this bottle of Eau de Juice from Cosmopolitan, but my one is 100% chilled. And if you like your sweet coconut smells, then this is one to try. The next perfume I'm sharing is Choco Musk by Our Rehab, and the influence on Instagram came from Yummy, and I love following her and seeing her collection and her tastes and her updates. And she talked so highly of Choco Musk that I blind bought it. And you know what? It's one of the few perfumes I would recommend blind buying too. I don't say that much. Let's give this a spray. You've got all the good stuff in this one. You've got chocolate, cinnamon, vanilla, and some rose too. It retails for about £10, and that is a heavy influence on why I think it's okay to blind buy this one. It smells like chocolate to me, and even if I were to say it's a bit of a synthetic smell, like maybe I'm thinking of little pretend sweet shop, chocolate shops I had as a child, I'm sure we had one, and the kind of, I mean, can you get fake chocolate? But that kind of, like, like a chocolate spread or something that isn't quite chocolate but has the flavouring. That's good enough for me. This just smells really good. And it's as simple as that. And I remember in one of Yummy's videos, not for this fragrance, but another one, she said something about longevity. She said, I can't comment on longevity, and I'm paraphrasing. She said, but, but look, you know, like for the price, that's fine, I'm going to respray. And that's how I feel about Choco Musk. It just smells good. My husband loves it and it's lovely to wear at night time. It's cozy, it's fun to layer and I couldn't be happier with it. So I was influenced, but I so love having this in my collection and in turn, I've talked about it a lot on here and on Instagram. So I would thoroughly recommend Choco Musk as a chocolate scent and myself have no regrets. Next, we have Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 from Kayali. And the influence of this perfume came in a bit of a different form, but still over on Instagram. So I haven't really included perfumes that I've bought because of Instagram, because of the brand and how they're advertised, but this one was an exception because Kayali, I think are very unique in the way they approach Instagram. They are so community-based and they repost and they really, really advertise through their Instagram page and their socials in a way that I think was very groundbreaking compared to other brands. So with Love Fest, what happened was I'd already received PR in the form of Utopia Vanilla Cocoa, and I had my uh, Eden Juicy Apple as well, but then this was launched, and it didn't come to me in PR, but I kept seeing it on the brand's Instagram, and it just looked so good. The descriptions of it, the fun, the way that Mona had talked about, developing this perfume, when she wanted to kind of have something post-lockdown, she'd missed seeing people, she'd missed festivals and vibes and good times, and so Love Fest Burning Cherry was born. I kept seeing these things, I kind of waited out, will I get a PR, do I need to buy it? But then I just bought it. I couldn't be without this scent. And so we have in the notes, Burning Cherry, Raspberry, Praline, Palo Santo, Guyacwood and Patchouli. And this perfume has just been a game changer for me with cherry perfumes. I am often a bit reluctant now to purchase a cherry perfume or request one or be sent one by a brand because this is a little bit definitive for me as a cherry scent. It's just boozy and beautiful and now I smell it and I want to go out to a restaurant and drink a cocktail. I mean, it's not even one in the afternoon here, but that is how this perfume makes me feel. It's smelling so good. It doesn't feel synthetic. It feels boozy, foody, luxurious, and so woody and good. My husband has worn this and I need to encourage him to pick it up again. It's so totally unisex and enjoyable and a real quality perfume. I love this one. And so I was influenced, but there were absolutely no regrets. I'm really glad I bought this perfume and would that I were to run out. I can't make too many dents in my perfumes with the amount I have. I would want to replace it for sure. It's everything it promises. And like a lot of Kayali scents, you, you do get what the brand tell you you're going to get. All of those amazing notes and longevity and just something really luxe and fun in your collection. So if you want a really, really good quality cherry woody scent, Love Fest Burning Cherry is also a recommendation from me. 
This perfume is Heat Wild Orchid by Beyonce. And in terms of how I was influenced, I'd seen it in a couple of key people's collections and roundups over on Instagram. So if you do happen to be watching and I spoke to you about this perfume, forgive me that I can't remember now the names or the handles of the accounts, but it featured a lot, maybe three or four years ago. And so I knew I had to revisit it for myself and see if I loved it as much as it was being described. So with this scent, you have in the top coconut nectar and pomegranate. In the middle, you have honeysuckle and magnolia, and in the base, whitewoods, amber, and musk. And I will give it a test for what is the first time in a long time. It's been neglected, but I will change that today. So, this is a perfume where I'm convinced I'm smelling vanilla but it's really very creamy, sweet, magnolia and coconut. It's very lovely. It smells so much more expensive than its price point. I wouldn't have paid more than 15 pounds for my bottle. And it wasn't until about a year or so ago these stopped being as easily available online. It's such a shame. There were some good perfumes in Beyonce's first line. It's floral but the creaminess just gives it something more deep. It wears really nicely and it's so good to wear as an evening scent. I'd love to give it a try in the summer actually. I mean, it's called Heat. Let's see how it does on warm skin. I love the original perfume, but this one is a bit of an unsung hero that seemed to get so much more popular through the perfume community years later when people were going back to it and testing it You know, once again put it into larger collections. It's a good perfume. I was influenced. I don't have any regrets. I just don't wear it enough. And I'm a little sad about these Beyonce perfumes. I feel that with the new one, it just doesn't get the kind of love or advertising that it could have. Um, I haven't tried it for myself, but for me, the first heat was so good. I just kind of wish that those ones could stay in circulation, even when, you know, um, known brands and names decide to bring out higher price points later on with their lines and products, be that as it may. This is a great creamy coconut perfume with some flowers. And if you can still buy it or find it, it's a lovely one. I didn't regret being influenced with this one, Heat Wild Orchid. This perfume is Chocolate Greedy by Montel. And there was a bit of a delay in the influence that Instagram had on me here. Back in 2019 even, going into 2020, I used to see these Montel bottles so many times on Mum of Curly Fragrances profile. So the lovely Dan Luger and I have had chats back and forth over the years. We've well wished and she and her daughter, I think her daughter likes these scents as well, love the Montel line and I would look at them, I would wonder, Chocolate Greedy stood out the most, but it wasn't until maybe a couple of months ago that I added it to my collection. It is jingling away here because actually Somehow I didn't even open it until today. And I thought now is the time to open this up and enjoy it. You've got all the good stuff in this perfume. There is cacao, vanilla, tonka, coffee, bitter orange, and dried fruit. I did test it in Harrods at the start of the year too, and I liked it, but to be honest, I was spraying so many that day that, um, you know, I kind of just had to have this rather than taking ages and being sure. I mean, it took ages. I, I first saw these Montels a while ago, but look at that, first ever spray, 100 milliliters. I hadn't realized that, okay. Oh, that is so good. Dark chocolate orange. Okay, I could happily smell of this. This smells like something different, and I think this will be a bit of a compliment getter too. That has so much more depth than I remember from when I tried it in Harrods. It's really, really rich. I basically feel like I'm smelling a chocolate cake. And do you know what? In my mind now is like Christmas celebrations and being at Sam's auntie's house where we're always really well fed and I feel like I could be smelling a pudding that we're about to eat. In fact, actually, I will add that I make a really good chocolate orange pudding and it smells like that. That's amazing. That can take me to that Christmas Eve pudding that I make throughout the year. I love this. So there we have it, finally tested it. Now it's in my collection, Montel's Chocolate Greedy. I was influenced by Instagram. I wouldn't have come back to this brand so soon had it not been for seeing so many of those posts 
going back five years ago, but I'm glad to finally have this in my collection. It was a higher price point than I pay most often for perfumes, but I was in that kind of mood where it was just time for a treat. So I bought this one and it smells amazing. Very, very rich indeed. So that is Chocolate Greedy by Montel. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed seeing the perfumes that Instagram made me buy. I'd love to know where you've been influenced and maybe it's been on YouTube or on TikTok or in some other way where people have just kept hyping up a scent or they've loved it so much in their collection that you've had to have it for yourself. I will answer questions about these perfumes, of course, and please do give this video a like and remember to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it. Do go and find me over on Instagram, on TikTok and on my blog. Thank you again and I will see you in my next video. Click, click.